Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and this is Catherine the 19th, the channel where we talk about living the creative life. Today, I wanna to chat with you about the best lenses for crop sensor cameras. Before we jump into it, you might be asking, what is a crop sensor camera? What is a sensor in a camera? Great question. Every camera has a sensor behind the lens that reads the light and creates an image. These sensors come in various sizes depending on what camera you get. Usually cameras with bigger sensors are gonna be more expensive. The camera that I have, the Canon 80D, is a crop sensor DSLR. If you wanted to get a full frame camera from Canon, which means a camera with a bigger sensor, you're gonna be looking at cameras like the 6D, and 5D, etc. Sony's full frame cameras are also really popular, like the Sony A7S and A7R. However, the price difference is very significant. This camera runs you about $1,000, where Sony full frame cameras are more like $2,500, $3,000. What are the differences when it comes to the images? Well, full frame cameras are going to provide a nicer quality image. They also are going to have a really big impact on the kind of lenses that you're going to use. Hence, this video. You aren't gonna use the same lenses for a crop sensor camera that you would for a full frame camera. To be honest with you, there are probably a lot of differences that I'm not even aware of, but in practical terms, the main differences that you're gonna find between a full frame camera and a crop sensor camera is how cropped the image is when you use a certain lens. So just imagine for a second that I was filming myself on a full frame camera. This is what the full frame would look like, and here's what it would look like if it was a crop sensor. As you can see, it pretty much just crops the image in, and so clearly this is gonna have an impact on what kind of lens you want to use. A lot of times you'll read online about what lenses are great for photography and videography, and many times the suggestions people are giving are based on using a full frame camera, which is why I wanted to chat about the lenses that I think are most practical for use on a crop sensor. The first lens that I think is great for any Canon beginner photographer or videographer is the 50 millimeter. Everyone knows this as the Nifty 50 by Canon. It is a 50 millimeter prime lens that runs you just about $150. So it is very reasonable as lenses goes. It's got a plastic body, so it's very lightweight. Definitely doesn't feel the most legit, but it works very, very well. It has an f-stop maximum of 1.8, which is perfect for getting a really nice blurry background and also for getting better pictures in lower lighting conditions. Everyone has a different videography or photography style, but I personally love to just go for that low f-stop, push it as low as I can go no matter what lens I'm using, because I really love blurry backgrounds and I also like bright photos. This is a really great beginner lens because it is so inexpensive and it gives you that low aperture, the great bokeh background. However, the problem with using this on a crop sensor is that it's really cropped. A 50 millimeter on a crop sensor works out to be more like an 85 millimeter on a full frame. So basically what that means is using the 50 millimeter on a crop sensor, it's gonna be pretty much impossible for you to film yourself or take pictures of other people or film other people in close quarters. So although I definitely think that is one of the best lenses you can get for a crop sensor, you're just gonna have to keep in mind that it's gonna limit you in terms of the space that you're in and the fact that you are not gonna be able to film yourself with it because it's gonna be way too cropped in. Well, I still think it's great to have the 50 millimeter because it has that beautiful low f-stop. My solution to the cropped in problem of the 50 millimeter is the 24. This is the Canon 24 millimeter little pancake lens. As you can see, it is very small and um, compact. This has a maximum f-stop of 2.8, which is nice and low, but not quite as low as the 1.8 that I really like to go for if I can. This will still definitely give you a blurry background, which is nice, and it actually makes it possible for you to film yourself with this lens. This is great, especially for YouTubers. Honestly, I would say this is probably my number one recommended lens for anyone using a Canon DSLR and is a YouTuber who wants to really up their game because the 50 millimeter is only gonna work for you in a YouTube setting if you have a Canon 80D because you need to have that autofocus. I think 70Ds have it as well. Continuous autofocus so that you know your face is gonna be in focus 
even if the camera's too far away for you to see. When I used to film myself on my T3i with the 50 millimeter, it was always a guessing game because with the T3i, of course, you need to set up the focus. And so normally when I was shooting with my kit lens, I would be sitting close enough to the camera that I could reach out and change the focus as I needed to. However, with the 50 millimeter, if you were close enough to the camera to adjust the focus, you would be way too close to the camera. That's why the 24 is perfect. It's a little bit more expensive. I think it hits around $250. However, I think it's definitely worth it if you're gonna be doing a lot of self-filming. The third and final lens that I want to recommend to any crop sensor camera users is actually a variable focal length lens, which the other two were primes. This is a zoom lens. I love this lens. It's another Canon one. It is 55 to 250 millimeter, and I believe the maximum f-stop is 3.5, might even just be four. So it doesn't have a really great aperture. However, you have the zoom. I mostly use this for events, nature photography, events. This is really great for when you're trying to get candid to people if you're doing event coverage, because people tend to get really awkward if the camera is close to them, but you can stand really far away and then just snap them from a distance. This is also really good for nature or travel. However, the one limiting factor is because the lowest is 55 millimeter, you're gonna run into the same issue that you do with the 50 in that you'll end up too close to people sometimes. That's why I think the pairing of this and the 24 are gonna be great for event videography because you can mix between um, the up close shots, but then also grabbing candidates from a distance. So that's it. Those are my recommendations for crop sensor camera users in terms of lenses. In general, my recommendation is, especially if you're doing any kind of YouTube work, try to go for lower lens lengths. I think it can be tempting to go for those giant zoom lenses because they're really impressive or even to go for the 50 because it's really popular. But I really do think you need to look out for some wider angle lenses. I know wide angles aren't always necessarily that desirable because they can really squash the image and widen you know facial features but the 24 definitely doesn't go that far and especially on a crop sensor a 24 is going to end up looking more like a 50. 50 millimeter is a great end point because that is actually the lens focal length that is closest to human vision so it looks most natural to people that's the reason why gopros look so weird it's closer to like 10 millimeter and so it looks so wide compared to what you're used to so i think if you're filming yourself a lot the 24 is a really great option if you're doing any kind of event or nature or travel kind of photography or video work the zoom is really good and um, the 50 is just great to have around for any time that you want a really really low aperture and the best thing about these lenses is these are pretty much the most affordable um, set of canon lenses that you can get they're all under 300 dollars i believe so as much as it takes a long time to build up a collection of lenses i've been doing this for like five or six years and i only have four lenses total so don't feel like you need to buy them all at once but if you were on the market and you're working with a crop sensor those are definitely the lenses that I recommend. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate the support and comment below if you have any questions about videography, photography, or camera gear, because I'd love to answer them for you in a future video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos like this. I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this channel. And as always, I love you all. I hope you're following your dreams and I will see you next time. Bye.